What's up guys, welcome back to the show, but back to another video. And in today's video, we are with our Supra. Um, guys, every time I open that door right there and I just look in the garage to get my laundry or whatever, I'm just like looking at it I'm like, what a blessing. This thing just looks so, so, so good. I know I'm a huge BMW fanboy and I know the guts of this is a BMW, but the body styling and everything, I have to believe that it's from Toyota. I mean, it's, that's the reason why they collaborated. Uh, but the car, guys, it honestly looks insane. I think it was a really good collaboration. And also, I can keep thinking about the Supra name. And it's, the Supra name was always such a hyped vehicle. I just love the fact that BMW uh, pretty much collaborated with a very hyped vehicle. I don't think Toyota really needed um, somebody to like to beg them to, for this collaboration, but I'm just happy BMW got to collaborate on a car like this because the super name is pretty awesome. And at the same time, this is a BMW heart and soul. So for me as a BMW enthusiast, and for me that actually digs a little bit of the JDM life, that's why I owned a 350Z before, I just think this is the best car for me. Also, for those of you guys who don't know, this is the 3.0 Supra. I didn't know before buying the Supra that there was a 2.0 version so a lot of you guys have reached out to me like hey nor you spent thirty eight thousand dollars i saw the auction i think you overpaid for this because i see some going for like 42 45 clean title uh with the 2.0 and uh, that being said um this isn't a 2.0 that the, this is the 3.0 um and there's a lot of big uh, not a lot of big differences but there are a couple differences that make that, that show that this is the 3.0 over the 2.0 the main thing obviously is the b58 engine um the cheapest b58 engine in 2021 the 3.0s, they're going for about 55, I think. So 55, that's not with the same color and that's with a lot more mileage. This particular spec with the yellow paint and these miles, the cheapest one I could find is about $60,000 and that's not even in the same state as me. So um, yeah, I think for the deal that we got it for makes sense just because of how rare this color combo is and for the 3.0, which is, uh, it's, it's the more desirable one as you guys know. No one wants a four banger and a Supra. I mean, you can have a slow Supra. I still think if you guys got the 2.0 for a lot cheaper, I still think it's a good cop just because of how beautiful this car is. Um, but just some differences for those of you guys who don't know. Uh, first things first is these wheels. So these wheels only come in the 3.0. I didn't know that. The 2.0 comes with a less appealing wheel. Um, but yeah, thankfully this one does come with a nice wheel. Like honestly, I love these wheels, guys. Like for, for stock wheels, these are by far my favorite stock wheels I've ever seen. If I actually powder coated these all in gloss black, I think it'd be super sick, but I love the two-tone. Normally, I'm not a huge chrome guy, but this doesn't look bad whatsoever. Now, the next thing that sticks out like a sore thumb is the Toyota Supra calipers. These are actually Brembo calipers that only come in the 3.0. So we have a Brembo caliper in the front. I don't think this is a Brembo in the rear. Um, I think this is the same caliper that's shared in the 2.0, but it's also paint matched in red. Um, so I love that contrast in red, and that's where we're gonna be doing also a lot of little red details in the the interior um, of the engine bay. I'm gonna be pretty much doing a lot of interior engine uh, like trim pieces and stuff. I'm gonna make it like red bolt, red oil cap, red bunch of things in there. So it just contrasts with the calipers really well. It wouldn't have honestly been a bad idea to go with like a red stripe and red seat belts, but I honestly really wanted the interior to match the paint color. So other than the B58 engine, the 3.0 comes with the limited slip differential. So this is way funner to swing around. And this is just the super to have honestly. The B58 is what makes this honestly amazing in terms of power. You guys know that BMW makes amazing engines and everyone always hypes in the JDM where the 2JZ um, in the BMW world, everyone praises the N54 and then now the B58, which I think is a new and improved version of the N54. So I just think this engine fits this car so, so, so well. And guys, just look how sick this is. I love it. I love these subtle details like this Toyota Supra right there. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of this engine cover just because it is a BMW engine. Like why is there a Toyota badge on the engine itself? At least give credit where it's due. So I'm going be throwing on some kind of like BMW engine cover. Uh, might even do a carbon fiber one. Uh, I do want to upgrade these. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the way these look. I know there's some different colored ones. We're gonna try to match them with the calipers. Uh, probably with those red stripes as well over there. And for those guys who also don't know, not only does a 3.0 come with the B58, which is awesome, the limited slip differential, but it actually comes with M2 suspension, which I didn't know about. So I did a little bit of research. But the control arms and everything come straight from an M2. So this car shares a lot of components with like upper tier BMWs, which I think is super sick. So again. For the value, I'm um, paying that extra $10,000 between the 2.0 and the 3.0, you're getting it in the wheels, the caliper, the limited slip, the bigger engine, um, the control arms. I think it's well worth paying that extra money to get the 3.0, and that's what I did at the auction, guys. There are some 2.0s, and uh, I honestly would have bid on it the same price I would have bid on this, just because I didn't know the difference before I bid on it, but thankfully, thankfully, I knew this was a B58 from the photos, and we bid it on this, and we got this one, and my oh my, guys, this thing just looks so gorgeous. And we're standing on the side that makes it look like everything's gravy in the Navy, 
For those of you guys who are new to the channel, <laughs> so welcome to my Toyota Supra. Um, this one obviously has some heavy damage. Now, for those of you guys who watched the last episode, um, you guys noticed that I checked out the damage back here and it doesn't look that bad. I feel like this can easily get pulled out and we just have to pretty much put a new skin on here. But instead of hoping and dreaming, I wanna be able to remove this guy. So in this video, I wanna remove this side skirt just so we can actually drive this thing as well. Um, and I probably honestly grind off this piece as well. That thing is just sticking out. I don't want anyone to get cut on the passenger side. And then honestly, probably just get it out for a quick wash because uh, this car is a little bit filthy from the auction and uh, it'll just be so much nicer to see this with a clean wash, especially from the driver's side. And it's just crazy, guys. This is the only car I've ever seen other than obviously the new G80s and stuff that comes with like, uh, it looks like kind of extensions to the, to the bumper. Like it looks like it has a front lip. It looks like it has side skirt extensions. Like this is all factory. It even looks like it has a rear diffuser extension, uh, but I believe this is all factory, which is just kind of crazy that a car like this um, from the factory just looks modified but it's not, so I love it, I love it. And finally guys, I did get to clean up the garage a little bit, it was an absolute mess. And uh, <laughs> I'm just super happy now I got the space. So yeah, without further ado, I don't know if it, this is a hard side skirt to remove, but let's go ahead and get the car jacked up a little bit and just start removing all the bolts so we can get this bad boy off of the car. bracket pieces that actually hold the side skirt on here. So that's another thing we have to order. I didn't know it was damaged. Um, but yeah, if you guys look at it, this is how the side skirt is supposed to be sitting on the car. If you guys look at the way the quarter panel is, uh, that's how it's supposed to be sitting. You guys can see how much is pushed in. That's actually not that bad. If you guys really think about it, and that's why this buckle is not crazy. This can get pulled out. Honestly, all this can get pulled out probably up to like right over here. Um, you guys can see there's still a bend over here as well. This can all get pulled out and then probably get it chopped, replace the whole skin over here and probably just get this chopped right around here. And I think it might be good. I mean, he might be able to even preserve this metal. I don't know if I want to do that just because there is some buckles in it. I don't know how clean it's going to look when he finishes the job. I know he does good work, but at the same time, I'm just going to ask for his professional opinion if he prefers to get this swap or not but if you guys look at it it's not that crazy like honestly i'm just shocked this door still opens and closes <laughs> this thing is just a trooper and god bless this door panel still good there's even glass guys this the glass is still in there i don't know if you guys can see it but it's right there i can feel it with my hand right there that is the glass it just won't come up because the door is like literally bent like a u so literally the glass cannot come up but I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this glass out of here just because the door is just really messed up, but the glass is still good. So if we could preserve the glass, preserve everything else on this door, including the side mirror, God bless. We might need to just get a door skin and we'll be good to go. I mean, honestly, worst comes stores, I might literally just cut this door skin in half to preserve that glass because that glass is like two to $300. Um, so yeah, who cares about the door skin at this point? It's already bad, it's already messed up. But yeah, I mean, if you guys really look at this, it's, it's not that bad, especially having the side skirt lined up next to it. Like you guys can see the damage, that's not that crazy. So again, fingers crossed, I'm really happy the way it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures the way it sits right now so the, the body shop guy can kind of get an idea of how it's supposed to look. Because once I take the side skirt off, he's not gonna have another side skirt to kind of reference. Alrighty guys, so we got the side skirt off. We got this piece off as well. Um, definitely gonna have to order a new one of these. I hope there's a part number somewhere on, actually yeah, there is a part number right on there. Um, this is actually from Toyota. So it looks like the brackets on this car um, and I think the panels are from Toyota and then everything else guys is from BMW because I think this guy right over here, yeah, all the modules and everything guys, it has the BMW logos on it. So <laughs> I literally think the external of this entire car is Toyota, the, the, the actual look of it and the aesthetics, which I have no problem with it. It looks absolutely stunning. And all the technology and everything from the interior, from the leather to the dash, to the steering wheel, to all the computers, engine, wiring, everything is BMW. So honestly, my favorite collaboration I've ever seen. But yeah, guys, we got the side skirt off. And uh, I mean, the thing is, this thing, I kind of scuffed it up a little bit over here, trying to just pull it out. Um, this actually is a replaceable part. I've seen some carbon fiber ones out there. I'm probably just gonna replace it with a carbon fiber one. It's not 
damage, uh, but there is a couple like indentations in it. And honestly, uh, I'm gonna try to perfect this thing. I want it to look like a clean title end of the day. Uh, so I'm probably gonna end up replacing it with a carbon fiber one, but I'm gonna keep this for reference anyways, even just in case the body shop actually needs it um, to figure out the panel gaps and everything. But guys, check out the good news right here. The damage did not actually hit the frame itself because if it hit the side skirt, it could have easily penetrated the side skirt and dented this wall in, which is the primary, like this is the actual frame right there. This stuff on the top, guys, is actually no big deal. So you guys can see it kind of like gets bent in over here. This is just the top skin. I honestly believe this can get pulled out pretty easily because this guy right here, that is straight throughout the entire thing. And hopefully that's the same thing the body guy says. I'm just super happy to see some more positive stuff right there. Now as far as this wire, um, I'm gonna make sure this thing stays clipped on. This wire, I don't know, I'm gonna try to tuck it in somewhere so we don't lose it. I might even just try to put it back right through there. <laughs> when I'm gonna be driving this over to the frame guy, I bet you everyone on the highway that's gonna see me from that side is gonna be like, Ooh, that's a sick car. Everyone that sees you from this side is like, oh man, this car is messed up. <laughs> but I mean, hey, at least nothing's gonna be dragging now once we actually get that thing up there. Also, uh, the belly pan is kind of sagging a little bit because we removed the side skirt. I'm gonna go ahead and just bolt the belly pan back on there so we don't have anything that flies off while we're driving. Yeah, and I think this guy shouldn't move. Yeah, because there's at least a bolt holding it in there. So I think we're good there. That shouldn't move while we're driving. And honestly, I hammered this in enough to where I don't need to cut it. Uh, so I think we're good on that as well. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and put those screws down there, tuck in that wire so at least the car is ready to move in and out and we can actually take this thing on a drive once we actually need to. Again, I'm just waiting on the seat belts. I'll show you guys the seat belt colors. You guys are gonna help me decide on the colors itself. I actually have a few samples over there that I got earlier today. But yeah, before we actually get into that, let's just go ahead and just put back on that belly panel. Actually get the car out for a wash I do have three different kind of samples in terms of belts there's kind of like this lighter yellow there's a brighter yellow and there's more of one that's kind of like a copper I think this is the one I went with my uh, my 435 this is the one I went with for the the 435 uh, there's this yellow and there is this yellow let me know down below guys what you guys think is the best yellow for this car um, honestly I'm still leaning more towards this, and if not this one, I'm okay with this one. Um, but let me know down below, guys. This is gonna be number one, two, and three, so comment down below what you guys think is gonna be the best one for this car, um, because I'm still thinking this might be still kinda nice, uh, just because it's a brighter yellow, and maybe if we go with the brighter yellow stripe on the steering wheel, it's gonna stand out more. But if you guys are just like me, and you want this to paint match uh, with the paint, um, then this is the way to go, I think. So let me know down below. I, don't, I think this is out of the equation, but maybe, maybe um, some of you guys actually like this. So again, if the max vote ends up being this one, we'll go with this one. So let me know down below. <laughs> but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and hear that cold start, pull her out, and get this baby washed up. Don't worry guys, after that cold start, I let it kind of idle for about maybe like a minute or two, and then I gave it a few like 2000 RPM revs. Guys, I love how this thing comes with verbals from the factory. Um, it's still kind of cold, so I don't want to give it full revs just yet. Uh, but before we actually get this car out to give it a clean wash, we do need to move the truck. The truck is looking so, so, so clean. I haven't washed her in a very long time, and I just love the way it looks, honestly. And I noticed this in the last video, guys. I told you guys that I might be selling it. The, the reality is I'm probably not going to sell it, but I'm just testing the waters. I wanted to clean it up. I wanted to get everything fixed. And the way to motivate myself is to say, hey, um, I want this thing to be perfect for somebody else. So when I sell it, I get the maximum dollar. And at least while I'm doing that, I'll be able to enjoy it, drive it around, make it look good. And if I get the right offer, I'll sell it. I mean, like, who wouldn't sell any of their cars for the right offer? Um, this one, not anytime soon, guys, so don't worry. I'm not gonna lie, there's just one person that's always very negative on my channel, and uh, he always comments down something negative. It has to be something negative. Not too negative, but it's like medium negative. He has like a medium negative level. Why do you always sell your cars? You're about to sell all your cars. The reality is, guys, you always wanna elevate in life. I have a beautiful truck. We got almost everything dialed in on that truck. I absolutely love it, I enjoy it. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with constantly trying to elevate with your life. I've had this truck for over six months now, and there's nothing wrong with trying to get a newer truck and a newer truck and a newer truck. Um, now, obviously, if you're putting yourself in debt, that's an issue, um, but there's nothing, again, wrong with trying to move up your cars, trying to move up your homes, trying to move up anything in life. For those of you guys who are kind of like me, we don't like to settle. There are some people that want to drive the same car for five or ten years. You know, that, that's all power to them, um, you know, but that's their thing. I like to constantly change and try new things, and that's why I figured that I would do YouTube because my life is constantly changing. 
changing and I might as well document my adventures. And for those of you guys who like to see that constant change, um, welcome to the channel. For those of you guys who don't and you guys like to, for me to stay with the same car for like five or 10 years, uh, you're at the wrong channel because my goals are much bigger than that. I'm gonna constantly elevate in life. And uh, yeah, again, if I could sell it for the price that I want it and move up, I would. If I can't, then I'm in no rush to sell it. But yeah guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and move the truck right down the driveway and move the Supra for the first time out of the garage for its first wash. I'm not gonna lie, it's super clean. It looks so good in the interior. I think it's the first time I've cleaned it since I got it. But yeah guys, time for the Supra to finally come out. Like look how filthy this car is. I can't wait for its first wash. Guys, I genuinely cannot believe that is a stock exhaust. That sounds so good. Guys, I need to get some soap. Hopefully the next time I wash my cars, you guys will see me use the, the, the foam cannon. And now it's time for that cinematic. I was going through the face. Nobody see my face. I was chasing at the paper. Been all the foot away. But everything again. And I didn't let the loose. I've been breaking rules. I've been making moves. But everything to prove. Now it's going how I see it through my lens. But it's stuck in my head. I can't seem to get away from it. I went out of my way. I'm trying to feel the eye again. I've lost some weight. Guys, I'm really starting to question if this thing is stock. <laughs> Did you guys hear that last bang? Oh my god, this thing sounds so good. Guys, we're pretty much almost ready to drive this thing. Again, probably the next episode, I'm probably not gonna make another episode on this thing until we get the seatbelts in. LD Solutions did get back to me. Shout out to them for again doing the seatbelts for us and also upgrading it to the yellow. I cannot wait to see that. But yeah, guys, as soon as they get done with those seatbelts, you're gonna put it in the car and drive it by the body shop and get a quote on this repair damage. It's gonna be our first drive with this car, and I'm so stoked. I mean, the sound system sounds amazing. It looks amazing. I mean, other than the damage over here, honestly, guys, it still looks amazing. After washing this car, wow, it looks like a dealership car. Like, I mean, it is brand new, 2021. 5,000 miles, guys. I finally got the dream key I wanted. Yeah, it has a Toyota badge on it, but I mean, Toyota, Toyota badge on it. But I mean, oh man, blessings on blessings, guys. Without further ado, guys, I just gonna have to conclude this video. Hopefully, coming soon, I should be getting the daily back. I mean, at this point, I, they did repair the rear bumper. I don't know if you guys remember, but the rear bumper was damaged. They did get that repaired, but we were just waiting on them to finish painting the rear bumper, the front bumper, and the mirror cap so the whole car is paint matched. I cannot wait to see it once it's all done. It's gonna look so, so, so good. But yeah, guys, without further ado, that's gonna have to conclude the video. I love you so much remember to stay humble i'll see you on the next one peace out